Oh, there it is. Okay. Whoops. All right. So you can you can you hear me now? Reminds you of that commercial from many years ago. Can you hear me now? All right. So, what does the Bible say about the judgment? Well, it says a lot. Hebrews 9.27, as it is pointed for man to die once, but after this, the judgment. And Acts 17.31, because God has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he had ordained, he has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. And 2 Corinthians 5.10, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body, according to that which he has done, whether good or bad. <laughs> Romans 14.10-12, But why do you judge your brother, or why do you show contempt for your brother? Uh, for we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. So then each of us shall give an account of himself to God. In Matthew 25, 31 through 33, when the son of man comes in glory and all is the holy angels with him, and then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he will set the sheep on the right and the goats on the left. Revelation 20 verse 12. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. Now, many writers use Revelation 20, 12 as a text to suggest possible types of books that might be opened at the judgment. I suggest there's only going to be four books. And, and so, uh, and two of these are very similar, but, but they're, they're a little bit different. And, and so, we are pretty sure that there are many books that will not be opened on that day. Like some of those books, science fiction, fantasy, mystery, technical, textbooks, magazines, TV guide, law reviews, comic books, newspapers, advertisements, hobbies and crafts, commentaries, and most religious material. In fact, I would say, other than the Bible, all religious material. And that includes your creed books. That includes these books that tell you uh, how to be saved. But yet, if they don't follow the word of God, the Bible, I mean, they're, they're, they're just not telling you what you need to know. So most religious material. And so that, that's these types of uh, books that try and make you feel good about yourself and uh, all that stuff. But uh, they're not going to be there. Those are not the books that will be opened. And this list could go on and on. So let us focus upon what books we know from the Bible that will be opened at our judgment. So let, let's get these. First book mentioned is the book of life. Remember in Re Revelation 20, 12. A and so Philippians 4, 3, Paul mentions this. And I urge you also, true companion, Help these women who labored with me in the gospel with Clement also and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Now that begs the question, how do we get our names in the book of life? Well, God adds our names to the book of life. In Revelation 13, 8, it says, All who dwell on the earth will worship him. And, they, I mean, and he's talking about Satan there. All who dwell on the earth will worship him whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. This has been going on since the beginning. God has a place prepared, and it is a place called hell. And those whose names are not written in the book of life, book of life will not be entering heaven. Revelation 20, 14 and 15. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. 
And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. In Revelation 21, 27. But there shall by no means enter it anything that defiles or causes an abomination or a lie, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. So the only people going to heaven, are they're going to have their names written in the Lamb's book of life. All right. The book of remembrance. This is another one that we read about. The scriptures speak concerning the book of remembrance. In Malachi chapter 3 and verse 16. Then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord listened and heard them. So a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord and who meditate on his name. In Isaiah 30, verses 8 and 9. Now go, write it before them on a tablet and note it on a scroll that it may be for time to come forever and ever. In other words, a permanent record that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children who will not hear the law of the Lord. Now we have two different types of people written in the book of remembrance. Those who are faithful, those who are not. I mean, so they're both written in this book. And 1 Corinthians 4 and 5 says, Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the hearts. Then each one's praise will come from God. And so we're not supposed to judge each other, except, yes, we do make righteous judgment. And so in Luke 8 and verse 17, for nothing is secret that will not be revealed, nor anything hidden that will not be known and come to light. In Ecclesiastes 12, 13 and 14, the conclusion when all has been heard is fear God and keep his commandments because this applies to every person. For God will bring every act to judgment, everything which is hidden, whether it good or evil. Amen. Romans 2, 16, in the day when God will judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ, according to my gospel. So, yes, that, that tells us one of the, the keys of how we're going to be judged. And so there are some things that God will not remember. I mean, there, there are some things we know God will choose not to remember. And those are Jeremiah thirty-one thirty-four. No more shall every man teach his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they all shall know me. From the least of them to the greatest of them, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and their sin I will remember no more. People like to have this idea uh, that, uh, well, I've done such bad things, God will never forget what bad things I've done. Well, that's a falsehood. And so whenever they do that, it's just a defeatist attitude. But anyway, as humans, we have a hard time forgiving others. I mean, we know that's the case. It is often very hard to forget the wrong done to us. Someone does us wrong. We just can't let that go. And God God does. I mean, we, we do things against God all the time. We sin, and that is against God. And he lets it go. And Jesus lets it go. <clears throat> Why can't we follow their example and just let it go? Amen. Well, because we're afraid we're going to get hurt again. So we're watching out for this person, whoever they may be. But see, that's not the way it is with God. And, and so what the record books contain is determined by what God decides to remember and what he decides to forget. At one time, he may put our sins written down in this book, but if we get forgiveness and our sins washed away and forgiven, then those are blotted out of the book. And so they will not be there. <coughs> All right. The next book that's going to be there is the book of deeds. And we, we've heard this before, but this book is different from the book of remembrance. I think the book of remembrance considers the attitudes or the hearts of the people God is dealing with. Whereas the book of deeds is dealing with what every person has done. And so there, there's a slight difference there, even though they're very similar, even though we're going to be judged by those things, 
And, and so it is the record of everyone's works and actions, their endeavors and their sin. That is, if they don't have their sins washed away or their sins forgiven. See, many of the sacred writers make it clear that men shall be judged according to their works. And you can go through, I, I think Jeremiah mentions that about seven times. And some of the other early writers uh, did that. And many of the, uh, the prophets, as we have studied on Wednesday nights, many of the prophets, they talk about the fact that you're going to be judged and God's going to hold, hold everybody accountable. <coughs> And see, modern theology is very uncomfortable in the light of this truth. I mean, they have been teaching a message which the Bible does not teach. Their, their basic message is, don't worry about it. God's not going to pay attention to what you're doing. He just wants to know what's in your heart. And then, of course, false teaching just comes after that. And the Bible is very clear that the record of every man's deeds will surely enter into the judgment which he shall receive. See, Jesus taught this in John 5, 26 through 29. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself and has given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth, those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. <coughs> of course, we know Matthew 25, 31 through 46, that great judgment scene, he gathers them all, separates the, the sheep on the right, goats on the left. He says, you, you people on the left, you didn't do this to me, and so I'm going to condemn you into the place you need to go. And well, wait, wait, when did we, we not do that to you? The fact that you did it to the least of mine. So how we treat others, that factors into our judgment. And then we know the Apostle Paul taught this. Romans 2, 5 through 6. But in accordance with your hardness and your impenitent heart, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God who will render to each one according to his deeds. 2 Corinthians 5.10, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. And then the Apostle Peter taught this. Acts 10.34, But in every nation, whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. You know, James taught this as well. James 2, 26. So faith without works is dead also. And the Apostle John taught this. I mean, 1 John 2, 4 and 5. He who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this, we know that we are in him. In 1 John 3, 23 and 24, And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave his commandment. Now he who keeps his commandments abides in him, and he in him. And by this we know that he abides in us by the Spirit whom he has given us. In Revelation 2 and verse 5, speaking of the church at Ephesus, he says, Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. Revelation fourteen thirteen. Then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Write, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works follow them. So you see, our deeds, both good and bad, are recorded in God's book of deeds. And God is perfect and does not miss anything. His will be a perfect judgment. It will be a righteous judgment. It will be a true judgment. So... It's not going to be, you can't do any appeals afterwards like we do in our system. 
you get condemned, you get a sentence, and then you then you start making your appeals and seeing if you can get get somebody who will take your case and <coughs> kind of have mercy on you. It's not going to happen. Once God seals your judgment, it is done, and that's what it is. The last book we're going to mention is probably the most important book, other than the Lamb's Book of Life, which which I guess they're all important. We can't really say one is more important than the others, because our judgment comes from all four of these books. See, <coughs> we're going to have the Bible being opened and read. That's one of the books that's going to be opened. And this is what we'll call the benchmark or the standard of our judgments. God gave us a command. I mean, a simple thing is, did we do it or did we not? I mean, it's going to be that easy for God. You did it or you didn't do it. I mean, depends on what it was. If, it, if I said don't do it and you did it, well, that's sin. If I said do it and you didn't do it, that is sin. So, see, God gave his commands in the Bible. And if we obey them, we will receive eternal life. And, of course, we need to throw in there if we obey all of them that we can. All of them. Not just some of them. Some people just listen for one command and think, okay, well, I'll do this. I've done the will of God. I get to go to heaven now. That's the wrong attitude. No. Our duty is to learn what we need to do to be acceptable to God. And if we reject and disobey his commands, we're going to receive eternal damnation. And that's basically what we will deserve. And there, there will be no arguing about it. I mean, that's the way it is because we're going to know. It's not like, well, I don't know why I'm burning in this horrible place. No. Everybody is going to know. There will be no doubt in anybody's mind why they are in hell. There will be no question about it. The basic reason is because they did not obey God. The great continuing witness of all ages is the Bible. God's word spoken throughout generations, uh, presented to us through the various millennia as he's given to us. That's the book that we all in, need to be impressed by. The Old Testament continues to be the most impressive witness of the deity of Christ that, and, and that it establishes his credentials historically for ages prior to the incarnation. I mean, can you imagine if, if we picked up the newspaper tomorrow and talked about an event that's going to happen 700 years away, how much credence do we want to put into that? I mean, we're going to think these people are nuts. I mean, sometimes we hear, hear stories. Someone who went and time traveled in the future came back and told us what it was going to be like. You can't believe that. You think that's a bunch of nut jobs doing that. And anybody who would actually put it in print, you got to think, okay, they're pretty close to being the same kind of nut job. But anyway, the scriptures speak concerning the Old Testament. I mean, the scriptures talked about the Christ and gave details of him. We talked about this several months ago when we talked about prophecy being fulfilled. We gave 53 separate prophecies of the Christ written anywhere from uh, 2,000 to 700, 600 years before the Christ. They all came true in Christ. See, in John 5, 34, this is what Jesus said, search the scriptures. For these are they that testify of me. These people were asking all sorts of questions about, can this be the Messiah? And they wanted to ask him questions about it. He said, just read it in the book. You got it. You've had it for hundreds of years. You've had your Bibles for hundreds of years. They're the ones that testify of me. They, they talk about me. They, they, they tell you what I'm going to do, how I'm going to do it, what kind of attitude I'm going to have with it. And you should know that. Luke 24, 44. Then he said to them, these are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. I mean, he told him beforehand. What he said was, you guys pay attention. 
you grew up hearing the scriptures, you knew what they say, you know they're talking about a Messiah, and you look and see if I don't fulfill everything they said about me. He says he's putting them to the test. Go to the scriptures. Let the scriptures answer the question, is Jesus the Christ? Absolutely, according to the scriptures. And so, Luke 24 and verse 25, Then he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. I mean, that his disciples, even while he was there, after even three and a half years being around him, hearing his teaching and watching his miracles, huh, I really wonder if this is the Messiah or not. They still had doubts. I mean, a lot of these doubts really came out when Jesus died on the cross. What did they do? The disciples. They didn't want to keep some sort of movement going. They, well, let's go back to work. They went back and got on their boats and started fishing again. They started going other places and, and they just left. Said, oh no, it's all over. It, it, I mean, it, it's all is lost. I mean, it's all a waste of time. They still didn't believe. Matthew 22 and 29, Jesus answered, said to them, you are mistaken, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. The word of God is God's power. That's the power that he wields today. That's the power he executes today. And it is the word. I mean, the word. That's what it is. See, the scriptures speak concerning the New Testament as well. Matthew 7, 24, and verse 26, these sayings are mine. You know, Jesus speaking, the Sermon on the Mount, and the people marveled because he spoke as one having authority. And Jesus said, these sayings are mine. I mean, you can't, you, you can't read it. I mean, I told you some things, you heard it said, and he quoted something from the Old Testament, but I say unto you, and Jesus was different. Matthew 28, 18 through 20, he says, Whatsoever I have commanded you, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded of you. And where do we find that information? We find it in the Bible. We can't find it in some philosophy book. We can't find it in a dictionary. We can't find it in, a, in practically anywhere, any of the books we mentioned earlier. The commands of God are given to us in his word. And Jesus said, my words will judge him in the last day. So as we said, on judgment, what books will be open? The words of Jesus. Where do we find the words of Jesus? Except in the Bible. You're not going to find them anywhere else. Now, there may be quotations of Jesus in all sorts of books and, and stuff like that, but... The words of Jesus found in the word of God. Those are the ones that are going to judge us. See, 1 Peter 1, 3 through 5. The word of the Lord endures forever. I mean, he's talking about the gospel. The gospel message of Jesus Christ endured forever. And Jesus said, Matthew 24, 35, See, I have told you beforehand. He told him what he was going to do. It's not like you, you, a magician comes out on stage and does a few things and, and wow, everybody's amazed because they didn't know what was coming. Imagine if someone said, okay, here's what this guy's going to do. He's going to do this, 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 and it's, it's going to appear like his, uh, his helper disappears or something. And people just watch that and, eh, no big deal. It's that shock and awe. It's, it's that uh, amazement that people have. Whoa, I wasn't expecting that. I mean, so Jesus, he told them beforehand. He told them when he started with them, when they started joining him, and he said, follow me, and they went along with him. They were there three and a half years living with him, eating with him, drinking with him, walking with him, being persecuted with him, all these things. And Jesus told him beforehand, here's what's going to happen. And then when it did happen, well, duh, that was a big surprise. 
No, it should not have been a surprise. But in a way, it was. See, Hebrews 2, 3 says, How shall we escape if we ne neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him? Who are those who heard him? Well, Peter and John and James, Jude, I mean, and the Hebrew writer. I mean, all of them, they confirmed these things. In Second Peter 3 and verse 2, that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and by the of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Here, Jesus puts himself in that, that position that I am one of the apostles. I was there. I heard the glorious message. This is my son. Hear him. He heard that glorious message on the mountain and it affected him. And eventually, he came around, and he, he was preaching to these people. Tell them, the Lord spoke to me and told me what to say, and here I am telling you what Jesus had to say. John six sixty eight. But Simon Peter, Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And, and so that, it, it's just very simple. So four books that we will be judged by. See, first, second Timothy four and verse one, Paul says, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. I mean, throughout the New Testament, we read about the fact a judgment is coming and all the writers, all of them talked about the judgment that is to come. So friends, the judgment day is real. And the judgment day is coming. Amen. And there will be no question about when it gets here. Some people want to throw out some sort of human philosophy that, well, judgment day has already come. I mean, that's a bunch of hogwash, a bunch of hooey, a bunch of garbage, whatever you want to call it. It's false teaching. And what does that do? It upsets the faith of the unsuspecting. And these people are going to be condemned for teaching such heresy, such lies. See, God has given us a Bible and a lifetime to prepare for our judgment. And so we have that lifetime. We have the judgment that we're waiting for, and we need to be prepared. That means we need to take what he says in his word, apply it to our lives, and then do what he says. And we got to sit down and, and really examine that does do what he says mean nothing more than just showing up on Sunday morning to go to church? I mean, for some people, that seems to be their their whole duty to God. And folks, it's not going to work that way. We warn people all we can. We warn them till we're blue in the face. So are you ready for the books to be opened? Well, there's one book you need to be really opening right now, not waiting on, but opening right now, and that is the Bible. You learn from the Bible and then apply those things to your life the way God wants you to do it. And then, if you are faithful to God, he has added you to the Lamb's book of life. And you, you can be there, but as we read in that one passage, you can be taken away from that Lamb's book of life. That goes against the once saved, always saved theology. You can be taken and removed. Your name will be blotted out of the Lamb's book of life if you turn back away from him. And it can happen. Some people teach it's impossible to happen. No, it can. The Bible says so. So who are we going to listen to? Man, or are we going to listen to God? I mean, that, that, that's the choice everyone has to make. That, that's it for tonight. That's, uh, something we need to consider. And, uh, our judgment is certain. It's coming and we need to be prepared for it. Are you prepared? So that, that's something you need to consider as we, as we're going to sing our invitation song while we stand and sing.